this is a, uh, an addition where we do most of our daytime dining. Our punch crowds have been really tremendous. And um, so this is a, a, a new room that's built on the top of our parking garage. So this is an addition to the historic building, which was the Hughes building. Um, which was built in 1905. Um, but this room has been multifunctional. So it also serves as event space and um, a lot of other uh, expansions on big race days like Breeders Cup and Girl <laughs> Um, you said that this building, it was a factory that made doors? Is that what you said? And it was originally built in 1905 and was really in the lumber business. And each floor had a different um, section of woods. And so they had a like a uh, spiral um, tr um, staircase, but it wasn't a staircase. It was like a, a, a trough. And so they would put the woods on there and it would come down and they would mill them differently on each floor. And they ended up making, uh, specializing in doors and sashes. And all the doors to the Kentucky Supreme Court offices were made in the old, original Q's building. Um, the freight elevator here was so popular that the, the man who owned the building at that time built a, uh, a set of windows around so people could come up the street and watch the freight elevator actually work. Uh, it was, <laughs> a little entertainment, yeah, light so, entertainment. Instead of um, Netflix, they were able to come down and watch uh, the, um, the uh, freight elevator uh, work mechanically. Yeah, we have outdoor dining uh, on top here, and you'll see those with the umbrellas. And then um, it, the extension the press of that box. is the terrace. And there's the uh, press box uh, logo and sign. We can just walk out this way. We we have um, we had our first awards dinner uh, back in November. Uh, prior, or no, take that back in September. Prior to the September meet at Churchill Downs and. Our first honoree is Bill Kerstangen. So we have his silks on one of our jockeys who are now decorated for the holiday. How's that? Can you get part of that? Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, his racing silks that he had approved. Uh, he was our first honored guest and we'll have that on an annual basis. But around the same time as we had the LTS stakes. Our, we had our first LTS stakes out at Churchill in September, uh, 275,000. Stakes race won by Just Mike. That's right, uh, Michelle Lovell. Michelle Lovell is one of our, uh, in addition to the purse, uh, she got a, a membership for, um, for to the LTS. And Michelle is not only a, a wonderful human and great ambassador for our sport and our industry, she's a, a, a wonderful trainer as well. And we're getting ready to, you'll see, uh, putting uh, two large TVs out here. So um, they're putting the conduit that will connect to our AV room. And um, so this is, um, we'll be able to utilize, uh, people will be able to sit out here and watch uh, as well. It's our fire pit and uh, we got that covered up right now, but it'll be uncovered and then we got, it, that's on a timer and it's a fire pit that people can enjoy out here. Uh, so uh, people can uh, come in here. This meets all the smoking ban ordinances. It's 80% enclosed, 20% free air. So, um, and it's as decorated as well for the holidays. Kit, how you doing, my man? There, we're going to make these sliding doors here too. So uh, you'll just be able to utilize this space to kind of transition. One interesting thing, Jenny, is all of these tables in here we made from uh, wood that we took out of the original building. Those are beams um, that were extracted for when we put elevators in. And when we did, I took the end of that beam and I blew up the rings to count how many rings um, there that I could count. And I, on one, I counted 128 rings. Well, if you do the math, the building was built in 1905. So that tree that provided our beams was 128 years old when, before 1905. So those, those pieces of wood were around in this country when George Washington was around. Wow. And it's a gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We got uh, 10 bedding machines. And then we have our own um, barrel rick. And um, we'll hold 30 uh, barrels. And so we're going to be 
trying to get a barrel from each of the distilleries in our uh, corporate members. Look at that. These are very cool. Just the, the <laughs> attention to detail with the little horse head there. The old part of the building. And I think you'll see the uh, historic value. These are some uh, prints that I had and I just had them brought down and we framed them to go on this wall, which is our sidewalk to our humidor. Then now you've entered the, uh, the bourbon bar, um, which has got um, one of the finest selections of historic and, and rare bourbons anywhere in the world. Uh, that in the caged area up there, that's Mike's private selection that he owns. And they, he can sell shots out of those as a souvenir. And then all of the others are very high end. The higher up you go, obviously, the more expensive the, uh, the product. One of the interesting things, two interesting things about this bar, Jenny, one is the, is the mirrors are on a slant. Now they're smoked in a way. But in Prohibition days, all the bars had mirrors where if the customer was sitting here, they could look up and if the bartender turned his back to mix your drink, you, made, you were able to make sure that he poured the right amount of product into the drink. So um, um, that was something we wanted to uh, reinstitute. And then this bar was owned by Mike. Uh, if he had a building over on Market Street, when he sold the building, he brought the bar with him. And it ended right here. It was only this long. And so we had a wood uh, artisan woodsman here in town make the rest to match. And this is Mike Snell you're talking yeah. about, your partner. Yes. And then we've got some uh, crops. Um, uh, that one is Robbie Alvarado's that he donated. Uh, John Court, Corey Lannery. And then the pink one, can you guess who that one is? I'm guessing it's Chantel Sutherland. Chantel Sutherland, Sutherland. <laughs> yes. Chantel has been one of our guest speakers. And then Julio Espinosa as well. So uh, we tried to enter in, you know, ingrain the, uh, the, the horse side theme with uh, really every aspect. Uh, but you can tell all this is original wood. Um, we, we kept everything. When we first came in here, those duck, that duck work, which is black, all of these beams were about that same color because this building was heated with coal for many, many uh, years. And so we didn't know what the woods would look like, and we brought in a blaster that, with walnut shells, and we blasted those, and that's really what we ended up with. All that's been done to that is varnished, and the woodwork is just amazing. Um, that's what really attracted um, us to locate the LTS here, was the just the amazing woodwork. Are, are we saying story. how much you all have spent on this? <laughs> well, these are private cigar lockers. Uh, as, you, as you change subjects yeah. on me. <laughs> uh, let's say this. Um, one day we were here early on and somebody walked in and he, as he was leaving, he looked at Mike and I and said, man, I really enjoyed your place. It looks like a million bucks. And Mike says, well, it should. It cost us several. You know, when you do a, a project that's more of a passion project, you, you walk through the building and you go, you know what would be really cool? And you go, yeah, that'd be really cool. And so we would add it. And of course, we only add, uh, didn't think about it until we had to pay for it. But um, we've got all of these private cigar lockers. When I see Stone Street Farms yep. here and, and Robbie Valentine there. Yeah. And so um, these have become so popular. Each is uh, individually uh, um, humidity and temperature controlled. It has a vent. A lot of people wondered where he ended up. And that right there, I think. Now we, now we know. Now we know the mystery Somebody's has been answered. Somebody's got to tell CNN because they just had something on that. Oh, and we got jeans yeah. here. Let's see what you got yeah, in there. I, in I, the I, vault. Yeah, in the vault. This is kind of like, who was that? Um, they, it was what's his face, you know, Geraldo. Uh, Geraldo <laughs> in the vault. But and, I've got zero. Uh, yeah. But um, each one comes with a flask that has your name attached, and so you can utilize the flask at the bar if you want to drink. You take it out on the terrace; they'll pour you a sidebar. So if you get through the drink, you can pour your sidebar in your uh, your vessel. So um, we tried to. Um, 
make sure that each everybody gets a true value and um, and a, a, a club experience. And, um, so this humidor is a, one of the largest in in the not only in Kentucky but anywhere in the Midwest. It's in a private facility. Uh, humidity and temperature controlled in here. Uh, Liquor cabinets down there that are private. You'll have your name attached to those as well. You'll be able to store your own private. Uh, you purchase the product here, but able to keep it in your store. And then all of our cigars. And uh, uh, this is all uh, Spanish cedar and was constructed in Michigan. And at that time, we couldn't get it transported back. So we had to go get it. And then it fit together kind of like a Lego piece. So. Uh, oh, so what is this coming out of there? That's just uh, the humidity uh, it is set. Um, and so once it re gets under a certain percent of, of, of humidity in the air, it's triggered and that machine will come on and will either add moisture or try to take out. So sometimes it's sucking in, sometimes it's warm. And there are uh, sensors throughout the room and, and so each section of the hum uh, the humidor is uh, censored and uh, controlled. We have a lot of our point of sale up here, our merchandising. We're transporting that now down to the first floor. We're doing, opening our own merchandise store right on the, off the main street entrance. Our main uh, part of the building. And then we're kind of finishing where you would come in. Uh, this is our, uh, we have piano, we have uh, DJs, we have live music, uh, we've had all kinds of entertainment. Uh, Mike has a great idea. We're going to be doing a karaoke thing here. And you got to come for this. But instead of really singing, we're going to do race calls. So we'll have a race and give you the program and you get to call the race. And um, I really think it'll be a fun deal. No, I don't think there will be any Tom Durkins discovered in the uh, in the deal, but it'll be a lot of fun rather than just singing traditional kind of songs is that we'll be doing race calls. And so I can come up and it's for charity. We'll do it, uh, hopefully we can do it for, to the benefit. I can see Travis Stone here as a ringer. Yeah, you know, but, but he can coach. He can, you know, you can kind of be like your Blake Shelton on the board. Some Churchill dances. Yeah, this is the old days when actually, you know, they had a win window, a place window, a show window, a two dollar window. And the two dollar combination. Yeah, that's right. The show. Woody's the name of the horse. I don't know if he's. And it's I think it's the name of I think Woody's the best one. Yeah. Where did you Woody. get uh, this horse? From uh, Dale Rollins trained me for four years. I got pictures from yeah. the first day I walked in here till the finish. And it's oh, rather. Uh, interesting to see the difference that uh, time and hard work can make. I tell you, the, the biggest thing event when I told we started this thing, Jenny, it was three D's, not three D, but three D's: dreams, dust, and dirt. And we ended up with the dreams becoming real reality. And I, I tell everybody, dreams do come true.